and welcome to my review of Medal of Honor for the PlayStation 3. Medal of Honor was released by Electronic Arts for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC in October 2010. The original Medal of Honor franchise was set during the events in World War II. However this time the setting of the series has now moved to a more modern day theatre of war. This game is set in Afghanistan in 2002. The player takes control of various characters during the single player campaign. These are various special forces ground operatives as well as a gunner in an Apache gunship. It is fairly obvious from the setting that EA are trying to encroach upon the Call of Duty Modern Warfare franchise. However, unlike the fictional scenario that Call of Duty is set in, Medal of Honor uses the actual conflict in Afghanistan. For some people, the inclusion of the Taliban, which are still operating and still pose a real threat in the region, was distasteful, and there was an outcry before the game was released, which focused primarily on the multiplayer campaign, where it was possible for a player to play as the Taliban, shooting allied forces. In response to this outcry, EA changed the designation of the Taliban in the multiplayer campaign and renamed them as Op 4, although the Taliban do retain their name for the single player campaign. The single player campaign is powered by the Unreal 3 engine, whereas the multiplayer is powered by the Frostbite engine. In the single player campaign the graphics look rough in many places, especially when compared to the multiplayer campaign. It certainly does not stand up well to Call of Duty's more recent efforts such as Black Ops. That is not to say that they are terrible, they just don't look as good as more recent games, and the inclusion of the Frostbite driven multiplayer engine only serves to highlight this even more. Would it really have been beyond the realms of possibility to have had the single player campaign powered by the Frostbite engine as well, as in Battlefield Bad Company 2? The gameplay is pretty standard fare as well. It may seem hard to judge any first person shooter by saying that there is little new here, but the obvious nod to Call of Duty is prevalent throughout the game. Playing as various characters and the seemingly now obligatory on rails helicopter gunship section have been done before, and despite the slick execution, they don't really provide anything that has not already been done equally well before. Married to the inferior graphics, there is a temptation to cast aside Medal of Honor as nothing more than a poor man's Call of Duty, and leave it at that. However, that would be doing the game a huge disservice. EA are clearly rebooting the Medal of Honor franchise. Finally casting aside World War II as the inspiration for the series, they have taken the rather bold step in targeting the big boss of the first person shooter market, which is Call of Duty. It is a bold and brash step, and although many may think that it is an ill-advised one, I actually think that they have done the right thing. Whereas Call of Duty seems destined to head down the road of more fanciful stories that would not look out of place in a Tom Clancy novel, Electronic Arts seem to be intent on keeping things set in the real world. Consequently, the game does have more resonance, as the player feels that they are part of a conflict that actually happened, rather than some scenario dreamt up for dramatic value. In fact, Medal of Honor does take its cue from the real Operation Anaconda which took place in Afghanistan in 2002. This is always going to inspire much debate though. Should we really be playing games based on events so close to modern day? Can games like this give us a greater understanding of what is going on in that region? Or is it simply a case of exploiting a scenario for the sake of entertainment? The answers to those questions depends entirely on your point of view. Back to the matter of the game itself, ropey graphics aside, Medal of Honor is a good, solid first person shooter. However, the single player campaign is brief and, as becoming more of an alarming trend these days, the longevity is found in the multiplayer. Before I get to the multiplayer, it is well worth mentioning the tier 1 mode. This mode is where you get to play through the single player campaign, but this time against the clock. 
Your efforts are ranked on a leaderboard should you get through to the end of each mission, and along the way you can see where your friends got up to. This plays more as a hardcore game mode, with more limited ammunition and tougher bad guys. It's a nice add-on, but it feels as though it was an attempt to try and flesh out the single player experience somewhat. It is rather unfair though to consider Electronic Arts as being the only company that's done this. In fact, Call of Duty Black Ops does something very similar itself, where its all too brief single player campaign is fleshed out with quite a few add-ons in the menu. Some people may think that this is sufficient enough to mask over the obvious brevity of the single player campaign, but personally I don't tend to see it that way. I think that the single player campaign should be something which is fully developed and not considered as an afterthought. When all said and done, according to statistics, the vast majority of console gamers are still not playing online on a regular basis, if at all. This might seem shocking to some people, but the truth of the matter is, is that online gamers who play regularly are in the minority. And although the tip of the balance of the scales may be slowly swinging towards the online multiplayer experience, for big AAA titles like this, I think that it's only fair that a fully qualified and fully designated single player campaign is given as much attention as the multiplayer campaign. The multiplayer aspect of the game was developed by DICE who did the Battlefield games and it shows. Immediately anyone who has played Battlefield by Company 1 or 2 will feel at home. The game modes out of the box are as follows. Combat mission where the objective is to clear 5 objectives while the other team tries to stop you. Team assault which is a straightforward team deathmatch where the winning team is the one who accrues the most points or reaches the score limit before the time runs out. Objective Raid, where one side plays as the Op 4 attempting to plant IEDs whilst the other team tries to stop them, and Sector Control, where the teams try and battle it out for possession of three objectives. Post launch, two more game types were released and have become available via downloadable content. They are Hot Zone, which is a King of the Hill type game, and Clean Sweep, which is akin to the Last Man Standing type game. I'm not really too sure where I stand when it comes to DLC, but for games like this it seems somewhat cheeky to release downloadable content in the form of game modes so soon after the game is released. At the end of the day, the consumer is being asked to pay full price for a game, and it seems that when game types and maps and so on and so forth are released so quickly after the game itself has been released, it usually means that items of the game, parts of the game, have been withheld and could have easily have made it onto the disc, but the software companies tend to try to milk as much money out of the consumer as possible. Now I'm not going to get on my high horse and say, look how shocking this is and how can, it, how can this be so, I mean at the end of the day it's you know the price you pay for playing video games. But at the same time, I do think it is rather cheeky that so soon after a game has been released, that DLC which introduces new game types suddenly become available. Now, this is something which isn't new, and I'm not going to mark down um, Medal of Honor for, for doing this. This is something which has gone on for quite some time, you know, ever since the uh, horse armor appeared on the Xbox Live Marketplace for um, Oblivion, DLC has slowly but surely become um, a much more important and well documented aspect of a game, to the extent that these days DLC is actually being um, detailed on various websites and other publications and so on, months before a game is actually released which I just find is, is absolutely staggering. I can't believe the cheek of some companies to actually start promoting downloadable content 
before the game itself has actually been released. It's so obvious that this DLC could easily have been included on the disc and has been withheld purposefully to make the, the software company more money. And considering games aren't cheap, and, you know, in many cases, as I've said, there is an issue of brevity um, with single-player campaigns, and, you know, a lot of multiplayer campaigns as well seem to suffer from being underdeveloped too. It seems ridiculous that this type of stuff is being withheld. If it's ready, then it should be included with the disc when the game's launched, and I don't mean included on the disc, only for you to have to pay X or Y number of pounds or dollars to actually pay to unlock it on the disc. If it's on the disc, it should be available to you for no extra charge from day one, and that should be that. Going back to, to this game, as to be expected, considering who the developers are for the multiplayer campaign, it is very good. But it also does invoke a problem, and it does raise a question regarding Medal of Honor. And that question is simple. Is it worth buying the game if you have Battlefield Bad Company 2? You see, that has a single player campaign as well as the multiplayer, and the whole game uses the Frostbite engine, and looks and plays much better than Medal of Honor. It appears to be a quandary that EA has curiously put itself in. It seems strange that um, a software publisher would release two games of this type relatively close together, um, and you know, seemingly or bizarrely, putting themselves in this sort of unique position, whereby what do they promote? Which game do they really back in future? Obviously, the Battlefield games have taken a lot of support on board, they've garnered an awful lot of support for themselves and they are excellent games. Medal of Honor in recent years has become a bit of an enigma for Electronic Arts. It was, you know, originally in its, its inception was very much regarded as one of the finest first person shooters on the games console. However, um, in recent years it's suffered, especially as Call of Duty seems to have gone strength to strength. Medal of Honor seems to have suffered, and although this game does represent a very good attempt at trying to get back on track, it does seem to be confusing to me that Electronic Arts would be almost trying to promote two game types to take on Call of Duty. Surely throwing their weight behind one or the other would make a lot more sense surely promoting and throwing the full weight behind Battlefield Bad Company 2 would make much more sense than releasing a game like this which appears to be you know sort of half and half it's neither one thing nor the other all that said though in my opinion this is worth getting the single player campaign may be brief but it is engaging and it is fun to play and the multiplayer again as I've already said is very good whether you think that it's worth buying if you already own Battlefield Bad Company 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops, again, is purely down to you. For me, it is well worth the time. To sum up, Medal of Honor is a brave attempt to put the franchise back on the table, and EA do deserve a lot of credit for trying to do that. It is rough around the edges and lacks the spit and polish of many other first-person shooters out there. Um, but it is in the gameplay department where it does count, and it is an enjoyable game to play. It, it works well, and if you're a fan of first-person shooters in particular, you are going to enjoy playing the game. And it is pleasing to see Medal of Honor getting back on track after some lacklustre efforts in recent years. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching this video, and uh, please stay tuned to my channel to see any future video game reviews. Thanks for watching.